talked a bit about just what you guys got out of the last couple of periods in that game against St. Louis that you can carry over into tonight. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. We were trying to come back and you know win the game. Um, so it's just a it's a good team that plays hard, pretty deep in their forward group. Um, you know, and you know, it's a big game tonight, and just uh, you know, try not to d dig a hole like we did, and just you know, play our game. You know, the goals have been kind of tough to come by as far as you're concerned. You're getting a lot of chances. You've got the puck a lot. You're, you're generating. Um, is it just a case of getting a bounce, or is there more to it in your mind? I don't know. I mean, you know, just try to make the right play at the right time. Um, you know, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Just see, uh, see where it goes. Just keep playing, see where it goes. Well, that Bruce was... Um, uh, critical might be the right word, or just kind of generally hard post game, just about uh, performance and play. How do you respond as a player to that? Is that would you, would you rather that just be in the room? Would you rather not hear it publicly, or does that motivate you? Um, no, I mean it doesn't it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, you know, it's pretty sensitive as you know people now, so I mean it doesn't bother me. That's that's Bruce's job is to to win games and. Um, when you do something as a player that hinders that, that's uh, you know, that's that's very fair, very fair for him to come out and say that. So I, it doesn't bother me one bit. That's his job. Carl, during this drought, I think you've had a couple of five-shot games. You had an eight-shot game. How much are you finding that maybe the game is different in late March than it might be in late November? I mean, time and space at a premium. Teams either trying to get to the playoffs or, or bringing their games around to to have that playoff pedigree. Is is it harder to? Uh, manufacture things at this time of year as opposed to earlier in the season? I mean, well, I've played in late March before. I don't, I don't, um, you know, this is my first year in the league, so, um, you know, it's just sometimes things don't go in, and then you, instead of, you know, shooting the score, sometimes you you hope it goes in when you shoot, and that's a, that's a recipe for a failure. So, um, no, I don't, I don't, I don't really understand that. Bo likes to tell the story of in his sophomore year, I think he went 27 games without scoring, and Henrik took him aside and said, hey, I've gone longer than that. Bo said he may have talked to you a little bit about just about the drought, not to worry so much about it and just play. Has he you had a conversation? Yeah, I don't really about? think about it, right? I mean, we have a game tonight um, trying to win that. It's more important than you know me scoring goals. Um, you know, If I can score and help us win, that's nice. Those are the only times I get upset that I don't score, like break away. In Detroit, that's a big miss for us as a team. Um, you know, the one in Tampa getting called back, the big miss for us. Uh, you know, not burying the one in Buffalo with a minute to go, that's a big miss. So when there's important, you know, plays that I don't score on that, you know, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, we're running the team out of the building, I get a goal, what's that matter? So it's just uh, goals at important times at this part of the year are what matters more. So just trying to help them, you know, help us win games. Playing in late March when there's something to go for, I mean, this franchise in the past, Connor, has usually – Try to find something in late March, you know, being so far out of the playoffs, and it's kind of audition season for guys who, who might have a future with the organization. Just to be in the hunt, uh, what does that mean to you? In the fact you guys you still have a shot. I mean, you're four out, but there's a legitimate shot here still. Um, yeah, I mean that's why you play. You know, it's not fun. You know, like you, you see now teams are starting to get eliminated from playoff contention, and um, you know, fortunately, I've never been in that position. That's hard. I mean, I'm sure it's hard to play those games. So you play to win, and you play to make the playoffs and win a Stanley Cup. So um, for us to stay in the hunt, we got to keep winning games. And I mean, that's the most exciting time of the year is playing must wins and playing big important games. So I'm sure everybody in there is excited for tonight. Connor, with the line that you're playing on with JT and, and Tanner, you drew a lot of tough assignments and spent a lot of time in, in the offensive zone uh, on that road trip. As you sort of think about where your game is at and where your line's two-way game is at, um, can you take anything from the way you guys matched up against some of the NHL's best on that trip? Yeah, I think we, you know, we did a great job in, in Colorado. Um, you know, we did a good job doing our job, playing the full 200 feet, and um, you know that's something you know all three of us take pride in and try to try to be responsible. And you know that's uh, you know when you match up against the McKinnon line, you know you're not really thinking about going out there and trying to get three or four goals. So it's uh, you're trying to play them hard and make their night miserable. And St. Louis has three lines like that tonight. So, you know, we're going to have to do our job in the D zone as well. A lot of players, when they're going through any type of, type of streak, will say, you know, the risk is that you stop playing within yourself, that you, that you maybe start chasing. Is that a particularly high leverage sort of mental state to, to avoid considering the matchup minutes you're playing right now? 
Um, well, like I said, I don't, I don't really think about it. I mean, you know, I've never really uh, gone in the slump like this, but it's just kind of, it, it is what it is. I don't, I don't really think about it. I don't, you know, it was a day off yesterday. I didn't think about it. You know, I thought about, you know, our game coming up and how, how to help the team win. So if I have to block three shots tonight and that helps us win, I'll do that. That's, that's what's important at this time of year. I understand it's fun to write about, you know, not scoring goals, but for me as a player, you're just worrying about winning games. So if I can, like I said, if I can help by scoring goals, then I'd love to do that. And, you know, if you can help by getting a puck out late in the game, it's, you know, that's what you'll do. There's so much focus, obviously, on this gold route right now. But you surprised us. You sat at that podium, I don't know, six weeks ago. And when you were scoring goals, and you said you weren't all that happy with your play and that you knew that there were areas that you could be better. Like, goal scoring aside, like, where do you think your game is right now? Well, it's easy to be reactionary and say, you know, it's not very good because, you know, I cost us the game in St. Louis with that turnover. So... Um, but big picture, I thought you know, I had a pretty good road trip. You know, had some good games in, at the homestand. But you know, I understand I'm paid to produce offense, and when you're not scoring, it's it's easy to say you're not playing well. But you know, you can get one and, and get you know confidence, and, and then all of a sudden have a couple. So I mean, you just try to stay like this, you know, as, as, as best you can. And I know it's not easy. I know it's a big market. There's I'm sure there's a lot of talk about it, but. Um, I just try to go one day at a time. It's a big game tonight, and you perform well, and you can forget about the last one. Just what do you take away from the game in St. Louis that you can apply to this one tonight as you see the Blues again? Yeah, I mean, I think um, you know the game in St. Louis was a, a tight checking game. I think um, I thought our second and third were a heck of a lot better than our first, and I think that's kind of been the story of uh, a lot of our games, especially at home. I mean, I thought we did a good job of coming out strong at the beginning of the road trip. Maybe it was just Obviously, last leg of a tough trip, um, but I think if we get off to a good start tonight, it's going to be in our, in our uh, best interest for sure. And the way you want it, but is there momentum that you can gather from some of the wins that you had out on the road? For sure, yeah. I mean, you know, I think uh, I thought we had a pretty good road trip. Obviously, we'd like to get that last one or at least a point out of it, but at the same time, there was some tough teams that we played in, and uh, again, a tough team that we ended the road trip on, and I mean... I think it's awesome that we're playing them again tonight. Uh, they're still fresh in our mind, and and uh, we got to be ready to go right from the right from the start. Oh, well, you've had some legendary scoring droughts. One that goes way back, and I know Hendrik took you aside. Uh, your top six is so vital right now. Um, Garland's going through a tough time. Uh, as a captain, do you say anything to him to help work his way through it? I mean, he's had his looks, you know, but he's gone 15 games. So. I, I mean, yeah, I've, I've I've had a couple chats with him, and I think. Uh, I've definitely told him about my uh, my scoring drought I had there in my second year, and I mean everybody goes through it. I mean, I, yeah, like I, I told him, like I'd be a lot more worried if you weren't getting your chances. I think he's he's got like three or four a game. Um, it seems like great A's, and obviously it's got to be frustrating. But I mean, he's been doing other things for us. I mean, he was phenomenal against the McKinnon line the other night, and um, you know it's not always about scoring goals. Obviously, he wants to get on the score sheet, but. Um, He's going to find his way to the back of that for him. You're even getting some good looks uh, on the PK uh, with Petey, uh, with Petey playing it, uh, with Hughes playing it. Uh, it's been really good of late, Bo. What, what's different? It's not just the personnel. There seems to be uh, better pressure points. Uh, why is the PK so much better? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think there's uh, a lot of things that go to it. I mean, no, I think we are being a little bit more aggressive and, and making it tougher on their power play. Um, and obviously having, I think, that scoring threat a little bit it's always in the back of teams' minds, right? I think is, you know, you see it around the league more and more now that they're using their top guys and a lot of skill guys around the league now that are killing penalties. And um, you know, PD and Hughes are doing a great job out there. I think that's because you know your best players usually they pack a lot of things, but usually there's a good awareness. Like PD reads the game so well, and and of course he's he's got the playmaking ability to get those shorthanded chances. Do you think better players are just better suited to the PK? That's something that maybe should have been done a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's obviously it's um, it's becoming more and more, um, you know, you can see it around the league more and more now. I think, um, like you said, you know, when you're you're used to being on the power play and and you're seeing other teams' power plays and even reading your own power plays and stuff like that and being out there, you kind of make different reads where maybe guys that aren't on the power play um, wouldn't think to make. So I think you kind of put yourself in the power play shoes a little bit uh, when you're out there and, and making those reads. So he does a great job of that for sure. Matt, 
suggest that you guys have two losses left in your 14 games if you still want to get in. Do you guys think of it in those terms and, you know, big picture at all? Because Bruce has always been a guy that's kind of put those goals out there short term and long term. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough not to think about, but at the same time, you, we can't worry about anybody else but ourselves. And um, yeah, as much as you are scoreboard watching and, and, uh, and seeing what other teams are doing, I mean, you, you can only focus on what we're going to do and, and winning our game. So um, is it going to be easy here the last 14 games? Absolutely not. And But I think if there's any team that, that can do it, I think it's ours. I mean, we've proven a lot this year and, and the way we fought back and come back uh, so far and, and gave ourselves a chance, I think, you know, we can't count ourselves out. How much of an emotional grind is it to have to play at that pace for that long? Yeah, I mean, you got to go into every game thinking it's a playoff game. Uh, it's a do-or-die situation. It's it's like that at the end of the year. It's like that when you're fighting for a playoff spot. And um, like I said, we got to be ready to go every single night. Just to follow to that, Bo, meaningful games in March used to mean some sort of incentive when you guys were maybe eight or ten points out of the playoffs in the last years. As much as if it's a grind, how much are you just embracing this month? Yeah, no, I mean, when you're this close and, and you're, you know, four or five points out of a playoff spot and you actually you have a chance, I mean, you know, this is why you play the game. This is why you uh, you work so hard in the off season. This is why you work so hard during the season to get to this point. And, and give ourselves a fighting chance to be in a playoff position. Um, obviously, kind of kicking ourselves where we wish we would have been a little bit better at the beginning of the year to be in a playoff spot right now. But, I mean, we fought all the way back. I mean, why not fight right to the end? Well, you talked a little bit about the game and your work with, with Patterson. Just watching it, it looks like maybe he's got a little bit more of a green light to be aggressive and, and you're sort of uh, a little bit more restrained. Is that is that by design? And, and what's your sort of dynamic between you? Um, no, I think Pete does a great job of, of moving his feet first and then just kind of letting his, his instincts take over. And and for me, when I see that, it's kind of, you, you do have to be a little bit more passive because if if something does break down, then you kind of have to be that, that safety valve. But I think um, with him, he's made so many good reads where I haven't really had to, if anything, I've been kind of jumping up in the play with him. And I th we talk about it every time that we have to work on our two-on-ones because I don't know how many we've had, probably three or four, even a two-on-0 oh, when he buried that in, uh, uh, against Calgary. It's just, it's nice to, to be out there with a guy like that. It's just a matter of us finishing the job when we have it. Were you laughing about the Dallas game where, where maybe you should have passed and he should have shot? I, I looked at him and I was like, PD, you got to tell me right now where you open. He's like, no, <laughs> like, don't worry about it because I would have felt terrible. But um, it was just kind of an instinct thing where... It felt like there was guys around me, and I wanted to get it off quick. But yeah, I felt bad afterwards, um, praying to God he wasn't wide open, and he said he wasn't. So I was happy with that.